let's start with your approach as a vocalist, and then we'll do the technology stuff, because I think it's, okay. it's all kind of fascinating, the approach that you take to this. Um, it seems to me that you really treat the, your voice as a musical instrument. You really think of it as being a, a musical instrument. And of course, it is. It's voice is a musical instrument, but yeah. there's sort of different approaches to it. But your approach to singing and uh, production of music and everything has, first of all, a very... Uh, I would say, like, controlled, almost instrumental quality to it. It's clear mm. that you really care about the voice as a mechanism. Mm. And the other thing that, that kind of <clears throat> hit me to that uh, thinking, I don't know if you just... Well, I'll let you, I'll let you respond. Does that seem fair? Yeah, no, I, I would agree with that. Totally. Uh, the other one that, I, that was really fascinating to me was uh, last summer when we were at the, the NEC... Jazz Lab. Jazz Lab. It yeah. was it was really fascinating to to be hanging around with with you and Becca Stevens, who I remember you were doing these uh, vocal exercises that were mm-hmm. like re- and I would never thought of just the minutia of the human voice and trying to mm. think about these little things that having had a human voice for my entire life, sure, yeah. I've <laughs> never thought of ever. So yeah, I, I'm not going to be able to remember all of them, but I remember one in particular was you were trying to do. You were trying to just create one, uh, whatever it is. Uh, oh, one like thing? vocal fry thing. Is that uh, what it's called? Vocal fry is that like the what's that movie like the Grudge or whatever? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That sound and Becca's whole thing was like, can you do just one? And it's actually so hard. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I still can, I still can't do that. Wait, let me just try like one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, nope, that was like three. <laughs> Oh, it's so hard. It's so hard. <laughs> but you have uh, you've got some other exercises too. I feel like there were a couple of exercises you guys were doing that are just like trying to f- just work out the sort of minutia of the voice. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's something that that as a singer that you have to think about a lot because the thing about the human voice is that like the majority of people with the human voice are not professional singers because everyone has a human voice. So the human ear naturally because it already has it latches onto a human voice so much quicker than it does you know the drums the keys the horn even the lyrics like the actual sound of a human voice is what people's ears immediately latch onto which kind of means what message you're trying to get across Mm. because like the difference between uh and uh Similar notes, exact same shape, same first note, same last note, but that little uh, like, has a little slightly different emotional uh, thing to it that, like, doing that on purpose as opposed to doing the other thing can make the difference between, like, people getting what you're saying and people not. Sure. No doubt. Do you have any, do you have any examples of other little exercises that you do to just think about those specifics while we're on it? Let me think, let me think, let me think. Hmm... I was doing one with a student earlier today, actually, where we took, what was it? Uh, uh, it actually might have been, uh, 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 uh. that's what it was. So we took the same riff, moved it up a half step, then moved it down a half step, and then we mm-hmm. did that whole chunk and moved that whole thing up a half step. So it's like, uh, 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 then, uh, 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 and like essentially trying to slot into um, my mom, who's also a singer, she calls them like grooves, meaning like the same as like a groove on a record, like uh, the shape of the riff that you're trying to sing, you have to figure out the grooves in your voice to be able to land on those notes because otherwise you'll sing it out of tune or you won't sing it with the right exact shape. So like little exercises like that help with that finesse. Sure. Now, that also sounds like it's, it's deeply connected with ear training. Do you Absolutely. think about those two things as being different, or are they, in your mind, sort of the same principle? Or how much overlap yeah. do you think? Um, yeah, huge amount of overlap. I wouldn't say that they're exactly the same thing, just because one is dealing with the act of actually, like, like doing the thing, versus mm-hmm. one is the act of, like, hearing the thing. But because we're singers, and because we don't have buttons, and our instrument resides inside of us, it's kind of like asking a pilot to fly without any visual instruments or asking a surgeon to do medicine in the dark, like you, you're flying blind. So like you need to come up with clever ways of understanding how to relate a feeling to a sound and vice versa. Um, and so a lot of the work that I do with people, cause especially since, I mean, before quarantine, 
also, but especially since quarantine, I've just gotten very passionate about helping people with ear training and connecting to their ears. Mm. Um, a lot of that practice is about like learning how to not feel like you're floating through outer space because you can't just like go to the instrument and press the thing and the thing's going to come out. Like you have to hear it in order for the thing to come out. Sure. For sure. What, what do you do? How do you kind of get people used to that? Or what, what are maybe, uh, an, what's an exercise that you might use to get people to really think about it in those terms? Sure. Yeah. So I do one where, uh, so it's like a little game where like you have to, you have to sing a note three times, ex- like exactly. I say exactly in quotes cause all tuning is relative, but you have to sing the note, uh, exactly in tune three times in a row before you're allowed to move on to the next note. So say, for example, the note is, uh, so that what you'd play on the piano and then the person would go, uh, 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 and then they can move on. But if they were to go, uh, 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 nope, you have to go back. So if you scoop up into it or scoop down into it, you have to start it over. So that's one that helps with tuning. Mm -hmm. Um, another one I have people do is, uh, uh, soloing in their mind without actually singing out loud. Um, so turning on a recording and uh, soloing, just taking a solo to some instrumental recording. Um, because what that helps to do is to solidify that ear voice connection. And the same sort of, and this is something that all people that speak with their voice have in common. It's something that you, you sort of apply differently when you're singing, but like the way that you know that someone asks a question is because they inflect their voice up at the end. Right. Mm-hmm. And, a person isn't planning out exactly the fact that they're going to do that, but they have an instinctive knowledge and connection between their ear and their voice to know that in order to get this thing across, I have to do this at the end, right? So it's the same idea when you're singing. You're just applying it to specific musical ideas and situations. Sure. So you're talking about just learning learning other solos or something like that. Like you have the solo in your head, and you and then you're going to try to sing it, or is it a matter I'm talk- of I'm talking own- about... I'm talking about improvising okay, in, you're, in your you're head, but not actually yeah, singing sure. out loud. Like, I mean, obviously, like, improvising and singing out loud is its own thing and its own practice, but, like, mm. specifically improvising in your head and not actually singing out loud will help solidify that. Why am I doing, like, a telephone thing? But that, <laughs> like, that, that voice you can, ear you're thing. You're calling your brain direct. Yeah, yeah. sure. Exactly. <laughs> 